Hi, my name is Brad Lancaster, and I'm the author of Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, and the creator of the website HarvestingRainwater.com. So, what I want to do today is show you how to make a very simple uh, leveling tool, the water level. Some people call it a bunyip, uh, and this enables you to find what are the high spots, what are the low spots in a landscape, and what's the difference. So, it's really good for creating earthworks uh, or rain gardens and so on. Um, so all we need to create this water level is some vinyl tubing. I like to get 30 feet of it. Um, this is a thick walled vinyl tubing, but we really could get along just fine with thin wall and would use less material. I typically get 5 8 inch diameter, but you can get smaller. We need uh, four pieces of wire to lash the tubing to some stakes, but you can use string or whatnot. Um, we need some water to fill the tubing, we'll do that in a moment. We need a tape measure to mark the stakes and then a black marker uh, to mark the stakes. But you could carve it in too. So here uh, we've got two stakes. We've already marked one. It's really important, I think, that we start with one at the top. Okay, and you can do uh, in, uh, inches and whatnot, or you can do metric. The, these are inches. So what I like to do is put the two stakes on level ground with one another. And if I've already got one marked, like I do here, and let me first show you how I did that. Um, I would just take the tape measure, and again, starting at the top, I would just come along and mark it. Okay, right every inch. Um, but uh, this has already been done on that one. I do not want to start measuring with one at the top on this stake because they're different heights. Okay, so if you see I hold these up to one another. This one's slightly bigger than that one. Okay, that's fine. As long as we make the measurements, these lines of measurement, the same on each once we've got them sitting on level ground there. Okay, great. Got that one done. Now I'm just going to take the tape measure, use it as a straight edge. So, actually easier if I put it on the ground here. If you had a speed square, that would be even more exact, but this works fine. So now, I will take the tubing, some of the wire, and to bring some of it so it's higher, just higher than the uh, top of the stake. Flash the wire together. Okay. Get a second piece. And again, you don't need to do this with wire. It would be just fine to do it even with duct tape or twine, whatever you got. I want the uh, tube on top of the side of the stake that's got the numbers. Okay, get the second one, get the other end. set now we just need to fill it with water so um, ask my assistant Jill here um, and actually one thing we can even do Jill if you'd like to lay one stake on the ground this one yep uh, okay. all the way all on the ground flat. and what we'll do is we'll start pouring the water through and when it starts running through her side we'll have her lift up her stake just like this one okay, okay this gets the water running through a lot quicker so once it comes up here? Yeah, once you see it actually coming out the other end, then you will lift up your stick. Okay. All 
All right, we've got it filled with water. Now, Jill, if you stand just right here. So, um, if you can see, we've got some air bubbles in here, like right there. This won't work if there's air bubbles in it. Here we've got a really big one. Okay, so I will just keep sliding along like so, getting the air bubbles on up. If there's some tiny little bubbles, that's okay. The ones that really make a difference are the big ones that fill the whole diameter of the tube. And when you're working with the water level, uh, on occasion you can just see if the little holes have, not little holes, the little bubbles have um, become one big bubble. And if so, you can do this process to get that out. Okay, great. So now we got our water level here. I'll just add a little more water. Okay, great. And uh, when, once we've got it done, we want the water level to more or less be in the midway point of our units of measurement. And then we're all set. So um, I don't see any air bubbles. I don't see any kinks in the line. So I think we're all ready to go. And the way to double check that is we hold the two stakes together and on level ground, we should see that the water level in both of these stakes is level with one another. Okay, so there we're good. So this comes down to how this all works. Basically, this is a lake in a tube. A lake is a body of standing water and standing water will always have its surface level. Thus, this acts as a lake in a tube. So um, as long as the water is not moving, the water level in the two tubes will always be level with one another. So I can now lift one of these stakes higher than the other. Notice um, it, the water starts going up and down. To slow that down, I can tap the top of the tube. Okay, now it stops and I read on the one stake it says 12. I read on the other stake it's about 22 and a half. Okay? and the water level is level with one another. Now, if you look back at the stakes, you can see that the stake that reads 22 and a half is higher in relationship to the uh, bottom of the other stake, okay? So we have, and let's say it's 12 and 22, okay? So since the stake with the higher number is actually higher, we know with this particular water level, with one at the top, Whoever reads the higher number will be higher in the landscape. This is why I want one at the top. It's really easy in, uh, to, to think that way. Um, and uh, how much higher is this one than this one? Well, if this one is 22 and this one's 12, subtract the difference. Okay, so 12 deducted from 22 is 10. So we know that this stake is 10 inches higher than this one. So that's what I love about this tool. It not only tells us what's higher and what's lower, but by how much. And the other advantage is it goes around corners, okay? As long as you got one person on each stake and you're calling out to one another. So that's the basic way it works. And uh, what I would use this for now is if I wanted to create a level line across a slope that would become a contour swale or a contour Berman Basin, um, I could have, Jill, if you could come in, you hold on to that stick. Stake. Now, when we move this around, I'm going to put my finger on the top of the tube, and if you could do the same. And then I'm going to go down here, and let's see what the uh, difference is between the elevations with us. Now, here's a key thing. I sometimes have a bad back, and uh, I don't want to get lazy, and instead of bending over, read this thing like that. That will give me a bad reading. I always want the stake to be vertical. So now it's vertical, it's going up and down, so I'll tap this slightly to reduce that effect. Okay, now it's stopped and I read 15. Jill, what do you read on your steak? 20. 20. All right, so what does that tell us, Jill? Five. The difference of five inches. <laughs> and since you read the higher number, who is higher in the landscape, me or you? I have 15, you have 20. You, because you read the higher number, okay. 
So I know right now that I am five inches lower than Jill, and I know the slope is this way. So if I want to create a contour berm across here, I'm going down slope, not across slope. So I'd have to readjust. So I might come up here and let's see. Okay, now looks like I've got 17 and a half. This is about 17 and a half. Bingo, we got it. Okay, so what I would now do if I were in the soil is I would mark with a stake, a flag, or just a scuff in the ground this point, have you do the same on yours, and then we would scuff a line in the ground. We would know this is a level line. And if we were not working on concrete, but instead on soil, knowing the slope is this way, we could create a contour swale or berm across here. Okay? The other great thing about this is it enables us to see what the differences are in elevation of our overflow spillway from a rain garden and uh, what the depth of the rain garden is. And I, uh, I like to work with three key elevations in relationship to one another. So if I am creating a water harvesting basin, I want to make sure that that basin is for the depth is at least four inches. I'd love it if it were deeper, but the minimum is four inches. And then maybe on the edge of that, I have this overflow spillway. So I wanna make sure that the bottom of the basin is at least four inches lower than the top of that spillway. So I have at least four inches of storage capacity. Whereas if I had the overflow at the same level as the bottom of the basin, I'm not gonna harvest any water. And the whole point is to harvest water. So um, that's one elevation. The other is I wanna make sure the top of the spillway, the overflow, is at least four inches lower than the rest of the edge of the earthwork, okay? So if this were a basin, down here is the low part of the basin, there's the overflow spillway. I want a four inch difference between the top of the spillway and the bottom of the basin, and I want a four inch difference between the top of the spillway and the edge. So that way I don't, the overflow goes where I want it to, not somewhere else. And then the last thing is, if this is the edge of the basin, we want to make sure there's at least a four inch difference between the edge and anything like a building over here we don't want flooded. That way, if the overflow gets backed up and it overflows elsewhere, we don't flood what we don't want flooded. So um, those are some simple ways you can use this. There are others, um, but uh, those are the basics of how to put together a water line.